pushing me into the uncertain and lonely future of an unwelcome investigation. Hi. Sit over there, please. Maybe you can um, explain a few things and comment. Uh, during our filming, my, my young uh, production designer downloaded documents because we wanted to uh, to have these authentic looking papers uh, in, in, in close up and shots and she downloaded those uh, testimonies which actually to, to my shame and you know I only read the, the uh, little uh, um, write-ups in English and what can be said uh, on the issue that the, uh, the, the two documents uh, we have I mean, they, they seem to be like uh, Sergei Magnitsky's answers to investigative questioning and you, you write in the book that he, he set up a meeting. Uh, so he, he did set up a meeting and he wasn't summoned by the, by the investigators. I, 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 don't, I don't remember who, who set up the meeting, but I, th I think he was, um, he was asked to, to go. I think we asked him, perhaps. I can't remember who asked him. So Sergei Sir, Sir, <coughs> Magnitsky gave two testimonies, one in June of 2008 and one in October of 2008, um, before he was arrested in which, in those testimonies, he named the police officers who were involved in the raid, um, which eventually led to the tax rebate fraud. But uh, on the 7th of October, I found no names. But, the if, but if you look at the testimony, the, the names were named in June, and he was reaffirming his testimony on the 8th of October. On the 5th of June, it was not, not really known about the tax fraud. So he didn't name their names in the tax fraud, he named their names in the company theft, and then I think in, in July, the, uh, I'd have to go back to our sure, letters. Sure. Uh, I'm trying to pin down who was the first one who mentioned the tax fraud first. Um, uh, I, I'd have to go back to our records to figure out who was the first one, but um, we, we had a team approach towards the whole thing, so it could have been Sergei Magnitsky, it could have been any of our other lawyers, but um, uh, you know, that there was an ongoing investigation which led to the discovery of the tax rebate fraud. Yeah. But it was a strange figure called Rima Starova, who in April 2008 uh, went to the police in Kazan and basically reported a, a tax fraud. So her reporting a tax fraud was uh, part, of the, part, part of the Raider attack. She's one of the sort of you know, low-paid, sort of I think some kind of pensioner who they paid some small amount of money to to write, write some documents to sort of create some, some smoke screen about this. Because the police, they started to, to investigate, actually investigate the the tax fraud, and uh, in July, uh, they started to question the tax uh, officials and some of those straw men, fall men. Uh, it seems like uh, Rima Stara was m maybe at the beginning of that uh, police investigation. Or, I don't think so. Or, uh, I, I don't know the, I don't know the yeah. details. Yeah, so. A anybody, anybody who says that Sergei Magnitsky didn't expose a crime before he was arrested is just trying to whitewash the role of the Russian government. Mm. And then the other question, the question of the, of the original documents, because Andreas Gross wrote that uh, the original documents were seized in the search of your offices and uh, Feist and Duncan offices, and then were used for the re-registration and he said also, it's, it's, I was told in London by Mr. Browder's office that it was only originals were, you know, could, be, could be used to re-register companies. So in order to re-register a company in Russia, you, it requires that the <coughs> original, original articles of association, the original registration, tax registration, and other original documents, um, and it requires a notary to, to certify that you have those documents. Those documents were in the possession of Pavel Karpov um, from the Russian Interior Ministry. But, uh, you know, there is a registry. One can, in Russia, there's a registry. Anyone can go and uh, uh, get a copy of that uh, article of association or whatever. It's called the staff. And then they can basically proceed. And they can find a notary who will stamp their application. But, but you're, not, you're saying it wasn't... What, what are you saying? <laughs> no, no, but... Are you sometimes saying that, that Pablo Karpov is innocent? <laughs> well, I don't know, but... Uh, you, are, are, is you that say, what you're saying? No, no, no. But it's, it sounds I like read, that's what you're saying. No, no. I read, I read in, in, in Sergei's testimony 
that's probably amazing. these are better questions for the lawyers to answer than, than for me as a non-lawyer. I'd be really careful about going out and trying to um, do a whole sort of um, thing about Sergei not being the whistleblower, because it, it's not going to do well for your credibility on this show. OK, well, I mean, but, but I mean, it's just not true. I mean, so you know, it's, it's the Russian, it's, it's, this is sort of the subtle FSB um, version of And it's just this trying to cast aspersions where we don't have any men in Crimea you know, type of thing. OK. Oh, my God.